Hey everyone, welcome back to your weekly market outlook. This is for the 15th to the 19th of May 2023. My name is Vito and let's get this started with a quick promo code that you can use. It's Vito MA23. This is valid until the 31st of December 2023. This is to double your deposit bonus. So let's quickly talk a little bit about what's really going on in the market. So uh, I think the, um, the sentiment in the market currently is heavily affected by the whole U.S. debt ceiling crisis, and um, you know, been through it a few times, especially the uh, 2012, 2011, and 2013 uh, issues there. But again, this is this is more of a political game rather than anything else. So we're just waiting for the Republicans and the Democrats to come into an agreement and basically raise the debt ceiling for the U.S. And that's basically the whole issues right now. So. Um, it is going to be short-lived, but while the market is confused about the whole thing, I think we should just take advantage of that situation that there's going to be a little bit of a concern that, uh, of instability in the market, a potential shutdown in the U.S. Uh, government. I think that would create a little bit more of a safe haven situation for the U.S. dollar itself. So let's take a look at last week. We were looking at the CPI numbers. We did a live CPI session, so we saw what happened during the CPI. Uh, I think all the numbers was, uh, you know, the, the core numbers and the headline numbers, uh, they're actually lower than expected. So we've got the CPI, headline CPI, expected to remain flat at 5%. We got 4.9%. The core CPI from 5.6%, it went down to 5.5%. Uh, the monthly numbers, uh, it's pretty much as per consensus. We saw a little bit of a, an increase there, 0.1% to 0.4% on the monthly CPI for the monthly core CPI, uh, we are basically remaining stable at 0.4%. Um, but yeah, the initial reaction was that, you know, we saw a little bit of a, U a weaker US dollar, but it doesn't really last that long because of the whole current situation that's really going on. And, th and then we have the UK, the UK expected to hike by 25 basis points. We saw them uh, hiking 25 basis points. And I think they changed the, uh, the wording a little bit in terms of uh, them trying to pause interest rate hikes. I, I think that's right now um, not possible, but they don't really gave a great forward guidance in terms of how they're going to act in the future. Sure, they, they are going to be hiking interest rates, but in terms of how much you're going to be hiking and you know how many more interest rate hikes to come, we don't actually get a little bit, uh, we don't get any details coming out from that. Okay, um, that's the Bank of England. That was one high risk event for the sterling. Uh, and then we have the UK GDP numbers, uh, the G GDP growth, basically, uh, instead of expecting it to be a 0% growth, we saw, you know, the worst case scenario, which is a negative numbers, and we saw that as a negative 0.3% on uh, the GDP numbers for the UK. Uh, we also have the PPI numbers coming out from the US, also lower than what the market is expecting. Uh, monthly PPI numbers was actually... Um, Sorry, it was a little bit higher from negative 0.4% to 0.2%, but uh, it is lower than what the consensus is at 0.3%. Core PPI saw that a uh, little bit of a bump pretty much per consensus at 0.2%. So we saw a little bit of a growth uh, in terms of the uh, producer's price index there. Um, so, yeah, maybe a little bit of a concern in terms of, you know, a sticky inflation coming up from um, the U.S., this week, we don't actually have a lot going on. Monday, uh, we don't really have anything much. On Tuesday, uh, we've got the UK claim account change. This one here expected to go up a little bit, which is not really great. Uh, you know, that, that's really more on people... Uh, claiming unemployment benefits there in the UK. And then we have the Canadian inflation numbers. Uh, if you're into Canadian dollars, I think this is going to be a key event. But uh, in terms of how it impacts all the other major currencies, uh, I don't think it has a huge Im impact either the outside of the, uh, the dollar Canadian or the Canadian yen at this point in time. Uh, and then we have the US retail sales number, number re US retail sales number expected to go up uh, a little bit month on month from negative 1% to 0.8%. Core retail sales negative 0.8% to 0.5%. And then we have the Australian unemployment numbers remaining stable at 3.5%. That's basically the consensus. Uh, weekly US unemployment claims. 
expecting this one here to dip down a little bit, which is uh, great and in line with what the employment numbers has been showing up. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, fundamental side, we don't really have any high impact news coming out this week except for the Canadian CPI numbers. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at the uh, technicals now and we can see the dollar index here uh, out of the whole safe haven situation right now. It's getting a little bit of a boost to the upside. Overall, still below the Ishimoku cloud. In terms of key resistance, we're still below that 103.50 level. I think we need to see a move below one, above 103.50 to actually see a potential reversal in the US dollar itself. But at this point in time, we'll treat this a little bit more as a technical correction because if we take um, the Fibonacci here and measure how far it's going up, uh, right now it's at 38.2%, the 50% limit uh, pretty much at 103.50 there, or where the Ishimoku cloud is located, 103.33 to be exact. That's where the 50% uh, retracement is located. So I think this is current focus. I think we should anticipate uh, a short-term gain for the US dollar uh, up to those levels. But hey, at this point in time, we, we're still looking at that momentum building up here. But again, we have reached that 38.2% in terms of the correction level. Now, before I go on to the major currencies, I want to touch base a little bit on the euro pound. We don't normally touch this, um, talk about this until unless it's really important. I think for the euro pound, we can see here that the euro right now is attempting to recover. So we might actually see uh, the euro pound come back up to 0 0.88 at this point in time. And the, with that anticipation, we should anticipate the euro USD to be actually stronger than the pound USD. I mean, this is clearly reflected uh, in terms of how far the euro USD is uh, correcting itself right now. Uh, in terms of correctional levels on the euro usd this one here has fine support at that critical support level between 1.0850 and 1.09 and we anticipate this level to actually hold uh, any break below this level we could see one more push potentially towards 1.08 but anything lower than below lower than 1.08 we should anticipate a much deeper correction but we don't expect like crazy reversals in the euro usd at this point in time uh, this is overall still above the ishimoku cloud uh, we are still finding support at 1.0850, uh, 1.09 range there. Um, you know, worst case scenario would be 1.08. However, any transition below 1.08 that would take this below the Ishimoku cloud, then you know that's going to be a different story for the Euro USD. But if you take a look at the momentum here, uh, we're the, for the faster cast is already dipping below the 20 level. So. You know, <clears throat> we could find support here uh, right now around 1.0850, 1.08. Um, that's pretty much the limit on terms of how far it should act as a support uh, if we want to see a little bit more of a stronger euro at this point in time. Now, pound USD is a completely different story. We were anticipating that pullback. Um, on a note uh, last week we did we, we, that uh, we put out on Telegram was that 1.25 was basically kind of the anticipated correctional level for the pound USD. Right now it is below 1.25. We're looking at maybe an intermediate support at 1.24, but I, you know, ideally we should anticipate that much of a deeper pullback, uh, potentially towards that 38.2%, which is at 1.2350. We could go even lower towards 1.23. That would be even more ideal, but we shouldn't exceed that 50% Fibonacci retracement at this point in time. We should anticipate the pound USD to continue towards um, say support. Ideally, right now would be at 1.2350, around 38.2%, finding support at the Ishimoku cloud and see a potential bounce from off, off those clouds there uh, if you want to see any upside continuation on the pound USD. However, momentum here points out that there is a lot of room to go to the downside. So if the, if the move is quick enough, uh, we might actually see price you know drop down significantly lower. So right now, uh, again, for those that are new to momentum, the drop in stochastics doesn't reflect anything uh, in terms of price. So this price could actually remain stable at 1.2350, 1.24, for example. Stochastics could drop, continue to drop down and kind of resets itself. So I think that would be one scenario that we're looking at. Uh, but in terms of whether or not we're going to be looking at you know, that bounce off the pound USD immediately. I think looking at last week's data coming up from, from the UK, I think we might actually see a little bit more of a continuation on, on a weaker sterling here compared to the euro. So just keep that in mind if you're trading the um, the euro or the sterling. 
Uh, next up is the OZ USD. OZ USD, uh, very similar situation with um, the pound USD. Sorry, just go back, going back to pound USD. Just to note uh, that rejection up there. Uh, that's price failing at uh, 26 of May 2022 high. So we still see that rejection and I think it's uh, still on track for a little bit of a technical correction. We're not looking at a reversal. This is simply more of a technical correction, but we anticipate a deeper correction than the Euro USD for the pound USD. The Aussie USD, very similar situation here. We've got 68 cents, uh, pretty much capping um, the Aussie USD from progressing any further. Uh, momentum wise, I think we still tick to the, uh, still points to the downside. Price is trading below 67 cents. Price is below the Ichimoku cloud. Uh, right now, we do have support at 66 cents and then 65.50 but you know ultimately we could potentially be looking at that you know, final push towards 65 cents we might get that we might not get that uh, just keep an eye out on 65.50 to 66 cents see if those levels act as a support so if you're shorting the aussie usd um those are going to be your key levels to watch out for you know if there's any potential bounce uh, of those support levels so that those could be your target levels uh, at 65.50 and 66 cents for the aussie usd uh, next up is the, uh, the dollar Japanese yen. So dollar Japanese yen, let, let me talk through the dollar Japanese yen a little bit here. Uh, the dollar in in the current situation with the whole sentiment, it's more of a run towards safe haven. Now, uh, the dollar is actually stronger right now compared to the Japanese yen. So I think we are looking at a little bit more of a shift towards the US dollar as a safe haven rather than the Japanese yen. So the dollar Japanese yen right now uh, is picking momentum up. Uh, I think we could potentially see this one come back up towards 137 to 138. And as a comparison, just uh, again, as I always say, we when we talk about yen crosses, we should take a look at them individually apart from um, separately from the dollar pairs because if we take a look at the Euro yen, uh, this is gaining strength. Uh, the sterling yen, which is falling on the dollar pairs, is also gaining a little bit of a strength uh, just on the back of a stronger U.S. versus the do the, the Japanese yen. Okay, uh, just to wrap things up, I want to show you gold, right? Because there's going to be a lot of talk about gold right now. This one here, um, we saw the rejection happen but we don't really see a significant follow through for gold. Now, part of this is because of the whole US debt crisis going on. Uh, it's kind of cushioning the fall in gold right now. Uh, it makes it a little bit more flat. Uh, this is here right now, still hovering above the 2000 level. So I think the 2000 level is gonna be a key level to watch out for again. Um, any move below that 2000 level would indicate a much deeper pullback for gold potentially towards 1950, 1960 range. However, if price is able to maintain itself or sustain itself above that 2000 level this week, then we're likely going to see gold move towards the upper range towards uh, 2040, 2050 range uh, for gold. But at this point in time, it is flat. It doesn't have any significant direction. I can show you the hourly time frame and you guys can decide for yourself uh, that you can actually see that this is actually really, really flat at this point in time. All right, so with that, Good luck for your trades for this week and I will see you soon.